Hey everybody, what's going on? Steve DeCasa here. I'm at Set Studio in uh, New York. This studio is right above where I work right now. I got a full-time gig and uh, it's pretty awesome and they've been able to grant me access to it, which is really awesome. It's after hours right now, so there might be a little noise going on, uh, but it's fine with me. I mean, I got the lavalier on, so it should be fine. Now, I've gotten a request to do a video about three-point lighting. Um, excellent request. And now that I'm in this great space, I think it's the perfect opportunity for me to show you guys um, what it is. Now, if you've been to film school, first thing they teach you in cinematography is three-point lighting. And what that is is key light, fill light, hair light. And then, you know, you can light up the back background too. Now, I've got some Kinoflow Diva lights in the back here, but I think for this demonstration, it'd be best to shut them off so you can really see uh, the light that's hitting me, the subject. So I'm gonna shut them off right now. A little bit more gray in the background. Now I got the wide camera set up too so you can see everything that's going on, but when I'm talking about three-point lighting, we're talking about for a subject. You're lighting a person or an animal or, or something. It's not necessarily the same if you're going to be lighting an environment or if you're going to be lighting a set. It's a different mentality, but usually in filmmaking, there are people in your shots. From the people I've talked to, they're always wanting to find out cinematography things. Now, cinematography is simple. Key light, the light, hair light. That's your ground rules. Now, depending on the mood of the story, and depending on what you want to do, you can choose to have all three. You can choose to have one. You can choose to do just a hair light. You can choose to do just this, just that. You can mess around. But, but that's sort of your, your home base. That's where you start from. And you can eliminate and do what you want from there. Uh, just off the top of my head, I, uh, the movie Hugo, which won for cinematography, all the hair light in that movie, hair light back here, super hot, super hot. And if you notice in the wide shot, it's the only light that I have on that does not have a soft box in front of it. I happen to like really bright hair light. Um, why do we have a hair light? What's the reason for the hair light? It's to separate the subject from the background. With the hair light hitting the rim of you, it makes the edges of your body pop and therefore sticks you out and draws attention to the face. Pretty simple. Now, I'm going to take you step by step and show you what each light does, what it's there for, and how it looks on camera. So let's start with the key light. Here's my key light. Now, a key light is not a particular light. There's no light that's called brand name key. It's not a brand name or anything. The key light just means the most important light in the scene, the strongest light that's hitting your subject. You can see with just the key light on and no hair light and no fill, I might have a dramatic type look. I've got, I'm dark over here and uh, I might be smoking a cigarette and plotting on how I'm gonna take over the world. Um, depending on if you're shooting a model or something, you might not wanna light them with a strong key light because you wanna make them look beautiful and flatter them and you don't want them to be in the dark. Um, you also have to worry about light angle. I have the light directly next to me. If it was above me or below me, if it's coming up like this, it might make me look scary making shadows on my forehead. So to fill in these shadows and make it a little more even lighting, I'm gonna turn on my fill light. A Little bit better, a little less dramatic. If you're just a person talking about normal things, maybe this would be the, uh, the lighting for you. Now these two lights are both 500 watt lights with soft boxes in front of them. The key light is the key and the strongest because it's closer to me. The fill light is about twice as far away from me, maybe a little less than twice. Light intensity, now these lights just go on and off, they don't dim, so the way to get less intense light, push the light further away. So now, as you can see, there's something just missing about the shot. I'm not popping at you, uh, it's, it's less filmic. How can we make this look more like a film? The simple answer, hair light. In my experience, if, even if there's no key or no fill and you're just using ambient light, if you can just get hair light on the subject, it makes them pop and it makes it look like a film. So let's turn it on. Ah, I love it. I don't know about you, but I love it. It's just the little difference that makes it from blah, bland, to popping out at you. I can't stress enough. If you can get a hair light on them, 
go for it. Now in this particular situation, I'm in an awesome studio. We've got a low boy here, which is just a really heavy duty stand with wheels, and then a boom arm that comes out that's counterweighted. Now, I don't expect everyone to have that at home, but, and then it's a 500 watt light, not diffused at all, just pointing right at the back of my head. And with hair light, you gotta be careful not to shine it into the camera. If you shoot it right at the camera, you're gonna get a, a flare. Sometimes flare's good, sometimes flare's bad. It depends on the choice you wanna make, it depends on the film you're making, it depends on the story. But um, in this particular situation, this is awesome. I wish I owned this, but I don't, it's the studios. But um, hardest thing about a hair light is just getting it behind the person and on them without getting a stand in the way. And that's exactly what this low boy is doing in this boom arm. It's making a stand way over there and putting the light exactly behind me, which is where it's the hardest to get. And just to show you what hair light does without seeing the other lights on, I'm gonna shut the key and the fill off and just show you the hair light by itself, its own little element. Dramatic. Now this might work in a scene. If I actually iris up, I can go up to 2.8 on here. Oh, actually, no, I can't, wrong lens. I can go up to 4.5, but I'll up the ISO for a second. So now I'm at f4.5 at 1250 ISO. It's kind of a dreamy look. Now, I was just using ambient light, no light coming at me from the front, just only light from the back. And you're getting sort of a dreamy look. Maybe this is where um, the character's dead ancestor comes and says, hello, I am, you need to, you need to take that job or you need to, <laughs> don't, don't walk over the, <laughs> Don't walk over that little bridge tomorrow. Stupid. So anyway, that's what this look looks like. Fix it back. So once again, cinematography is key fill hair. If all else fails, just fall back on that general rule. Don't make cinematography more complicated than it needs to be. Sure, there are lots of gadgets out there and lots of ways to move the camera. They're very complicated, but um, I've actually worked with a DP who shot 35 millimeter and 60 millimeter. And um, in terms of being a cinematographer, in terms of being a DP, a director of photography, it's a lot about just being able to talk to the director figure out what he wants or she wants and translating that into a picture. Whether it looks beautiful or not, it doesn't really matter. Don't worry about the look. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. My advice is hair light. I love hair light. Give it some hair light and you've done your job. <laughs> In a studio setting like this, um, you also wanna light up the backdrop. So I'm gonna turn the keynotes back on. Now, I don't have a backdrop. I have a, 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 I'm in a studio with a white wall, a white seamless in the back, and um, it's always proper to, to light that up. My personal thing, and I think it's a good tip, is you wanna make sure that the lights that are hitting the background are not spilling on your subject. So um, these barn doors on the Kino do exactly that. If these were open all the way like this, completely not flagged at all, you might get some spill over here. I don't know if it's, too noticeable, but depending on your situation, I'm in a really good situation in a studio. Um, that, might, that might be bad. So the best thing you can do is you can actually stand by the light and you can see where the light is being cut by your barn door here. And you just kind of want to cut it so that it cuts over here on this far side. And the same with this. You can see that it's cutting and like that. Now you might not have Kino Flow Diva lights to use to light your background. You might have just some lights like this, but definitely soft, even light from both sides, um, 45 degree angle. That works the best so that there's no harsh shadows and that one side isn't too bright than the other. Uh, just a quick little tip right there. I know I've actually been doing a lot of green screen stuff recently and uh, I've been trying to key some stuff that that people just did not shot the right way. So if that's something you guys are interested in, if you'd like to see a green screen lighting tutorial, be pretty much similar to this. Um, I'll give it to you guys. Just let me know. So, okay, that was my three-point lighting video. 
Uh, guys, please like, subscribe, share it around. Uh, tell me if I could have done anything better. Give me some more questions. Send me some messages. I'm Steve DeCasa. Happy filmmaking. Peace.